Hi, this is Aaron with Zolotech. Today we're going to show you the Palm Pre Plus and the Palm Pixie Plus and give you a full review of the two. First of all, the form factors we'll go over. Uh, both very nice. Different users are intended for each device, I would think. I would think a heavy messenger user would use the, Pix or the Pixie Plus. Well, someone that wants a little bit more power would pick the Pre Plus. Uh, the Pixie Plus is great at what it does. The keyboard is very good, very tactile. You can hear the clicks here. Uh, very tactile and very easy to get used to, even with large hands, large thumbs like mine. I can type fairly quickly on it. Um, probably about the same speed as I could on an iPhone, but with less errors. The error correction on the keyboards isn't as good, though, um, so you do need to be more careful than on an iPhone. But not bad. Uh, it will do things like if you type a U, for example, it will turn the letter into or the letter into a word U uh, while you're messaging. Uh, ergonomically though, this is just a candy bar style, very nice, um, has inductive charging for the back if you buy the uh, touchstone charger, you just set it on and it will charge, very nice feature. Uh, the backs are removable on these, um, I'm not going to take the time to, to pull them off both devices, but you get the idea, pops off, you can pop your own design on there that they do offer. You have your volume up and down and your, your vibrate switch on the side and a normal headphone jack, although this takes a smaller headphone jack. The Pre, you can put any headphone in there as long as you've got the correct size, uh, 2.5 millimeter, I believe. You've got your hold switch here on top, which is not as good as an iPhone or the Pixie Plus, uh, but works just fine. Um, this is your power or wake switch here, and on the Pre or Pixie Plus, it's on the left. Seems to confuse a little bit of or a few people that try it, uh, but once you own the phone, not a big deal. Uh, on the sides here, um, you've got your volume rocker up and down, 2 megapixel, 3 megapixel camera, speakers, and your speaker. The speakers on the device, the Pixie Pot Plus is more than sufficient. Uh, the Pre has a better speaker, uh, just more room, I would assume. The camera is a 3 megapixel, 2 megapixel here, uh, so that's your difference. The, P the Pre Plus camera is much nicer. Um, as far as design and durability, very good design, but the screen does flex slightly, so you're going to want to look out for that, um, either with a screen, not necessarily a screen protector, but put it in your pocket, this facing your leg, shouldn't be a problem. The Pre, on the other hand, on the side, now with the Sprint Pre, people complained of the Oreo effect. I have not experienced that, I've had this for over a week, and that's about how long it took for the my Pre on Sprint to experience some of that. Not any of that at all, but now we have a separation right here. And that separation you can hear when you click it together. And it clicks sometimes. Although it doesn't affect the operation, and when this is up, you don't experience that. So that is an issue, at least for uh, probably some people. doesn't seem to bother me, but is an issue. Charging port, kind of goofy on the pre, on the side with a little cheap flap. Haven't broke it, so I can't really complain. And you've got the touchstone back, so unless you're sinking, it's not big of a deal, or a big, as big of a deal. On here, you have the flap, but it's magnetic, and it just flips out of the way. Same charger. Um, WebOS takes a little bit of a learning curve, and that's the problem with these phones. Overall, if we didn't have any other phones on the market, you have just pre WebOS, it's leaps above any other phone. But if, since we have the iPhone and Android to compete with, it's on the same, same level, different users intended. These are good, great, fantastic messaging phones. In fact, I use these to message. I use all phones all day, all day long, but I use these to message more than I use my iPhone because I enjoy the tactility of the keyboard, uh, which is very good on both phones. I would say the Pixie is a little bit better. Even though it's smaller, um, I like it better. Both backlit, both very nice. Sound quality on the phones is fantastic for calls. Here's your dial pad. Uh, you can just dial, um, hit, hit the uh, green button, you're ready to go. When you don't want it, swipe it out of the way. The main problem with the phones, like I said, is WebOS in that there's a learning curve. When I hand these to people that have never used them, they don't know how to use it and that's the problem. Now when you first sign in it does give you a quick tutorial and show you how to use them but 
uh, if you have never used a phone, you can't just pick it up like an iPhone and say, oh, there's a phone button, let's touch it. You kind of can, but you can't. It's a little bit more difficult. I know that sounds kind of goofy, but right here, what most people say is, how do I go back? And unless you know the swipe back, or touch the middle button, or swipe up, you don't know what to do. And then the other question I get is, how do you close it? By throwing the, the cards off the window. Now, this is a very nice feature if, once you're familiar with it, and it's very intuitive, but there's a learning curve. And that learning curve stops a lot of people in the stores from understanding how to use them. And unless the rep from Verizon or Sprint is very knowledgeable, they're not going to get it.